Hey everybody, it is Joe Martucci. It has been a long night and day. It's been an exciting one. I've been loving it. So much snow to go around here. So much to talk about. And this is what I'll say is our first recap of this storm here. We're going to do a bigger and better and fuller one either Sunday or Monday. But this storm really was, again just shy of historic for us in south jersey here and here was the radar during uh between 6 45 a.m to 2 55 p.m you can see a heavy band that made its way into lbi and for the most part did stay offshore but was enough to really bring us a powerful system so thank you to everybody for tuning in not only with this uh facebook live but all the other ones we've had today uh, it's good being with everyone here. Um, it's been fun. Uh, I've tried to soak in the snow a little bit. Uh, one of the downsides of working the storm is, you know, you are working the storm. So I didn't get to walk too much and just soak in it, although I might go for a walk after this and just see what we got. So let's start off with our blizzard criteria because we did have a blizzard at the Jersey Shore. That was confirmed by the National Weather Service. You need wind gusts or sustained winds over 35 miles an hour, visibility at or under a quarter of a mile, and snow falling or blowing snow. Now, we got that again at the shore, and we had it for at least three hours here. So, again, we met it at the shore, but the inland areas did not meet blizzard criteria, at least on the first analysis. You know, the thing is with this storm, yes, it's over, but we're just analyzing the data and picking up the pieces from what happened. I mean, in reality, the National Weather Service doesn't put out their final report on this for another week or two weeks. And we'll try to do something a little bit before that. But, you know, to really get a full, complete picture of what happened, it does take some time here. So let's look at our snowfall totals. Bayville came in at the last second here to have the lead for the highest snow. This was confirmed by the National Weather Service. I was a little skeptical, but if you were the one who measured here in Bayville, congratulations to you. We have uh, East Dover at 19.4, Obsecan 18.5. So it was pretty much up and down the shore that we saw these high totals. Um, you go down towards Cape May, we were still around a foot here. We'll, we'll show you a more complete map in a little bit. Here was west of the parkway, Jackson 14.1, Goshen 14, Whiting 13.1. So some really high totals here. And let's look at our largest storms on record. Now, Atlantic Sea International Airport measured 16 inches of snow. That set a daily snowfall record. And we now have the record for the snowiest January on history. History does go back to the 1940s for us here. So that was my uh, drone, that uh, battery was just went. But uh, 1940s for us here. So, um, you know, it's a pretty substantial record to have for us. 33.2 inches, we shattered the other records. Only 20.5, which I was actually a little surprised by. It was actually a little lower than I would have thought. Anyway, this was the forecast uh, on Friday. This was our final snow forecast, 12 to 18 inches in pink. 8 to 12 in blue, 4 to 8 in the lighter blue. So how did we do? Well, here's a couple of totals here. Um, you know, let's be frank about it. You tell me how you think I did. I'll tell you while uh, you guys answer how I think I did here. I think overall, I would, I would give this a, I would give this a B. Um, maybe even a B plus. Um, you know, it, it wasn't a perfect day, but I think there were I think there were a couple things that prevented it from being an A. One went a little low in some spots, and I do think that LBI and Seaside did get over 18. It's just there's no observations there, so maybe I should have drawn 12 to 24, or I should have done a little 18 to 24 strip. Also, Cape May, we I was a little under, not not by much, but a little under. But I think that dark blue uh, was pretty much perfect, except in Jackson. And then over in that lighter blue, I actually underdid it a little bit. But I think all in all, how about an 87? 87% for that. Marjorie says A+. Plus. I, I appreciate that, Marjorie. But uh, I, I don't know if the snowfall total itself was an A+. Plus. I think, though, 
you know, it's more than just that, right? I said minor flood stage. We had minor flood stage. Uh, I said top gust to around 50 at the shore. We don't have the exact numbers, but it's probably going to end up somewhere around there. We talk about the timing, 5 to 8 p.m. for start time. That was pretty good. Um, worst midnight to noon. Maybe not at noon. It was, it was the worst, except for some of you in Northern Ocean. But, you know, I think that was pretty good. And then ending between like 1 to 5, also good. So we're going to be plus there. Uh, Dave said you have a February snow contest. I am not. We are not having. We don't have a sponsor for a February snow contest. Although if there are any businesses, groups out there who want to sponsor our snow contest, we could do something for the month of March. We could see what the rest of the later part of winter brings us. We have our January snow contest um, where the winner gets a basket of skincare products from Exit Zero Skincare in West Cape Bay um, and a $50 Visa gift card. And it looks like we're going to have a winner by default because the highest total was 25. We were at 14.6 at the contest site in Lower Township. You had 11 to that. That was the earlier report. That's not even a final total. You're going to get above that. So I think we have a winner by default. We'll have uh, more info for you on that next week. All right. I want to show you this air pressure map because this is wild here. You see that L uh, in the middle there with a 972 above it. That's a 972 millibar low pressure system. That's like a category two hurricane um, when you look at the air pressure here. This undergone underwent explosive development. It was a bomb cyclone, bombogenesis. So when you have 24 millibars of an air pressure drop within 24 hours, and we did that pretty well because yesterday... At this time, that low pressure was about 1,005-ish, so we really dropped. Jersey circled in black, and I'll tell you what, um, and it's a little hard to see, but if you look for that, you see those gray lines, one running left to right, one running up to down. Um, those are latitude and longitude lines. We were just east of that, that cross, if you see it there. Um that's the 40 degree north, 70 degree west line, that intersection. That's the benchmark for a nor'easter. When you cross over the benchmark, that's where you see your biggest snows along the I-95 corridor. Of course, we are not along the I-95 corridor. We are the Parkway corridor. So to be a little bit east of that is actually good for us, and that's what we had. And I'll tell you what, we even had a little bit more wiggle room. If we went 40 miles west on that track, I think we'd be talking about widespread 18 to 24. So... Let's take a look at our future wind chills for tonight here. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the uh, comments here. If you're listening on Facebook, if you're on our website watching, appreciate that as well. You can come to our Facebook page and uh, ask any questions. So here's future wind chill, 8 p.m. Saturday. How about uh, getting close to zero by that time and then uh, negative single digits for uh, midnight here on Sunday? We don't always see wind chills this cold each winter. Um, usually happens, you have about a 50-50 shot of it happening each year. That's what we're having. We're getting that 50% yes. Uh, and then as we go to 10 a.m. Sunday, this is actually 10 a.m., uh, wind chills only in the single digits. So you want the snow pants, you want the scarf, you want the hat, you want the jacket, you want the gloves, uh, maybe even the hand warmers too. Here's a look at our setup for Sunday. Morning lows, 3 to 13 degrees, 13 near to shore, 3 in some of those places in the Pine Barrens that will really cool off. And then our afternoon highs will be 24 to 29 degrees here. So, yeah, it's going to be mostly sunny for your snow shoveling, but don't expect the temperatures to help you out with the shoveling. We are not going to melt much, although we are, excuse me, it's been a long day. Um, we are going to compact because that snow is pretty fluffy. So if you have this much snow, it's going to be this much snow. That might help a little bit. Uh, if you like winter, and I'll explain this in, in a second here, you might like this chart, and this is the Madden-Julian Oscillation. This takes a look at thunderstorm development in the Pacific. I'm going to save you a lot of the details on this. What I want you to look at is that blue and green line. Those are two computer model runs for where that MJO is going. So you see that it's in box three, and you're in box four. Um, that means that there's a good likelihood of areas of low pressure coming up the coast or at least going off the mid-Atlantic coast. Um, and this is through about the middle of February. So if you like winter, it is going to get in the 50s later this week. But 
we are going to be talking about uh, some more potential for snowier conditions as we get to about Valentine's Day. I'll say this. After Valentine's Day, I think we're pulling the plug on winter. Not to say something can't happen, but I think we're pulling the plug on winter. So, all right, with that, I will take any questions you guys have. Um, Dave Leopold says, can you explain millibars? Millibars is a function of air pressure. Uh, so there's different ways to describe air pressure. Millibars is one of them. Usually um, anything above 1,000 millibars is high pressure and below 1,000 is low pressure. That can vary. Um, oftentimes during the winter, it's up to about 1010 millibars, and that's the case for this storm or for this winter. Um, in the summertime, could be 995 is high pressure and below that's low pressure. It really depends on the time of year. Um, we have a question that says, Hi, Joe, is this considered a state of emergency for Atlantic City area? Yes, we are in a state of emergency. That was put in by the governor. Um, state of emergency allows emergency management officials to unlock funds uh, by the state if they need it. Really doesn't mean much in terms of the everyday person. You can still drive on the road technically. Of course, you didn't want to today. Um, you can still go about your business. It's just more of a function for local governments to get help from the state government. Uh, but good question. That's actually a really good question. Marjorie asked, uh, or no, actually, she doesn't have a question. She has a compliment. Um, well, thank you, Marjorie. Marjorie, I appreciate that. You give us more detail than any major TV station. Thank you for your diligence. Stay warm. I am staying warm, although my feet are still a little bit cold. Um, I'll tell you what, one of the beauties about doing these kind of live streams and doing what we do at the press is the ability to get into more detail if you guys are interested. So we could talk about this chart if we want, and some of you may be interested, some of you may not, some of you may just want the regular forecast, but we're here to do both. It allows us to do everything here. So really, it's a unique place. We're the only, we'll say, newspaper in the state with a meteorologist. Um, so happy to be that person for you. Um, and one of only a few nationwide, um, although we do have within our corporate company, Lee Enterprises, meteorologist by the name of Sean Sublet, who's in Richmond, Virginia, and he's doing something similar to what I'm doing here. So, all right. Uh, if, do we have any other questions, anybody? Anything about what's going on tonight, tomorrow, the snow that happened? Uh, maybe we can do hockey picks for NHL games tonight, NFL forecast tomorrow. I guess we're good. Oh, here we go. Dave Leopold wants to know about the polar vortex. Well, I'm going to tell you what. That this is what you guys can do, and I, I, I can't type it in right now, but if you uh, look up my name in Polar Vortex, so if you look up Joe Martucci in Polar Vortex, you'll see a video there, and you can hear all about the Polar Vortex. So, all right, everybody, we're going to... Oh, here we go. One question from Ruth. Haven't heard from Ruth in a while. Good to hear from you. Is it going to be windy all day tomorrow? No, actually, the winds will be fairly light tomorrow, um, less than 10 miles an hour, but when you have high temperatures only in the mid-20s, 10 mile an hour wind gets your wind chills into the teens. So, unfortunately, that, that's the story with that. Um, okay. Well, we're going to wrap it up. This was great. Um, oh, hold on. We got another one. Marianne. Okay, I'll hang on. If you guys have more questions. And please, share this around other Facebook groups if you can. Community groups. We shared it to a couple. If you have one or yourselves, um, feel free to share it along. I can stay till about 6.30 and answer questions. Uh, Marianne expects, how soon can we expect melt and evaporation? Um, I don't think any melting happens until Monday, Marianne. Um, tomorrow we'll see the compaction, so going from this much snow to this much snow. Then we'll start to melt Monday as highs get above freezing. I think we'll see good melt, um, we should say decent melt Tuesday and Wednesday. And then Thursday and Friday, again, temperatures around 50. Overnight lows are going to be above freezing, so a lot of melting there. So I will say this. I have a feeling by next Saturday, the only snow remaining will be in the piles that you either shoveled or the piles that were plowed. I don't think the snow on the grass is going to be hanging around much past probably, even, we'll say, Thursday night. So, all right. Well, again, appreciate everybody tuning in. I know you have other options for weather. I'm glad you're here with us. I say it every time, but we do appreciate it. If you want to subscribe, pressfac.com slash subscribe. We have killer digital deals right now. If you already subscribed, thank you for that. Appreciate it. Um, 
we will talk with everybody soon. We'll do a, a recorded video on this. You can check that out. And we'll have a full update for you. Check it out tomorrow. We'll have an article about this storm at pressofac.com. Slash web.